Before the Second World War and during it, Adolf Hitler utilised a number of different methods of transport to travel around Nazi-occupied territory. One image that comes to mind is Hitler when he rides into Austria, following the Anschluss, in an open-top car, saluting the crowds in the streets. He also, during his rise to power, travelled by air, especially when trying to rally support, as Goebbels planned a trip for him to speak in many different German cities. Along with his methods of travel, Hitler also had a huge number of headquarters scattered across territory, conquered and absorbed into the Reich. He had the Berghof, his picturesque mountain retreat in Brechtesgaden. He also had the Wolf's Lair, a concrete complex near to Rastenburg in Poland, in which the conspirators would try to take the Fuhrer of Germany's life during the July 20th plot. Before the start of the Second World War, there wasn't actually a headquarters for Hitler, where he permanently stayed in. Because of this, Adolf Hitler used his own personal train, the Führer Sonderzug, as his headquarters. Join us today as we look at Hitler's train, the Führer Sonderzug, named America. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. One of Adolf Hitler's favourite methods of travel was by train. This was not an innovative thing, as the German Kaiser Wilhelm II during the First World War created an imperial train, and with this subsequently the Weimar Republic would recycle parts of the Kaiser's train after he abdicated. There was a need for Hitler to have his headquarters, and before the first permanent one was created, the Felsen Nest, it was decided that the mobile train was to form his early headquarters. At the time this was around 1939, and the Second World War was just about to break out, and Hitler was staying on board his train named America. One advantage of this was the fact he could be a constant moving target if danger was on the horizon, and for his safety there was a front train and a rear train attached to the carriages to prevent any attacks. If say the front of the train was taken or failed, then the rear part of the train could still function to keep America moving. In 1937, Hitler ordered that the train was to be created and used for his travelling, and it took two years for the transport to be made. It was ready in August 1939 and was codenamed America. During the Second World War, it served as a Führer Hapt quarter or the mobile headquarters up until the Balkans campaign, but he did continue to use it once his actual residences were created. He would travel between Berlin, his mountain retreat the Berghof and many other German cities on America, with the train being followed by his Mercedes car or his plane should the need for an extra journey be required. The train would pull up to the nearest station, with the Mercedes then taking Hitler to the desired destination. It weighed a colossal 1,200 tonnes and had a maximum length of 430 metres. Impressively, the train could travel at between 80 to 120 kilometres an hour. Now, one issue was that the wagons were not armoured, which caused a bit of an issue during the Second World War, leaving Hitler slightly vulnerable. The wagons were standard carriages that had been adapted for the needs of the German dictator, for example, he insisted upon a marble bathroom inside a carriage and he had to have this tweaked. The carriages were built by different manufacturers, with the interior being an art deco style, and each was equipped with heating and also air conditioning. The train layout differed on the time and the need for the journey, and extra carriages could be added if more people needed to be on board, and it could easily hold 200 people. The layout of the first few carriages never changed, as the front of the train was the defence and communication cars. The train was complete with two locomotives which would allow the train to continue, should failure occur within one of them. Using steam engines, the locomotives had to be changed every 200 kilometres, with a new one charged with coal. The Führer Sonderzug could be powered by steam and also electrical engines, which allowed it to be more versatile. At both ends of the train was a degree of defence in case of an attack. Defences on board were made up of one SDPL 4i39 flat wagon, equipped with two anti-aircraft cannons, firing 38mm bullets. Inside these carriages was space for the crew, and also for ammunition to be stored. The fear was that the train could be derailed by an attack from the air, so 20mm flat cannons were also installed, that could fire over a large distance, around 5 kilometres on the ground, and also a large distance into the air. They could fire 800 rounds a minute too, trying to take down any attack on the Führer. Also there was a baggage car, in which belongings would be stored, and also Hitler's personal wagon, known as a Führerwagen. This was a Pullman car, and featured opulence and extravagant furnishings. 
Inside this carriage was a lounge, with a huge table and couches made from maple, along with Hitler's bedroom containing a simple single bed, along with a marble bathroom. Inside the Pullman was also space for a number of guests and a shower room, along with two antechambers, which were guarded by two guards, who controlled access in and out of Hitler's private carriage. The command carriages and communication wagon included also a conference room that contained the latest modern technology in radio and telecoms. Here Hitler would receive messages quickly about what was happening with the war effort, and he also had an Enigma machine placed in this carriage. Here he could send out and decipher encrypted messages. When the train was in motion, much of the communications equipment was not able to be used, and they had to use shortwave radio to communicate everywhere whilst the train was in motion. Along with communications, another important element of the train was dedicated to Hitler's personal guard. This carriage could hold up to around 30 SS men, and these men were tasked with keeping a close watch on Hitler and ensuring that he remained safe throughout his journey. It's probable that Himmler would have cherry-picked the best and most loyal members of the SS to complete this important role, being by Hitler as he moved across the country during times of war. There was another carriage for even haircuts, which was complete with many more bathrooms, and this carriage in particular was very heavy and could hold 11,000 litres of water to be deployed along the journey. There were many other carriages too, including more storage space for baggage and also more rooms for personnel and staff to sleep in during the long journeys. America was used for the first time on September 3rd 1939 and was used as Hitler's war headquarters and it gave Hitler access to follow the Polish campaign along with his staff. After the successful invasion of Poland, the train was kept near to Tempelhof Airport under strict supervision. It was used in October 1940 as Hitler travelled to France and meetings were held on the train. However, there was an issue when the train could not go further than the Spanish border as the railway gauges were larger there. In April 1941, the train was kept near to Vienna whilst Hitler oversaw attacks on Yugoslavia and Hitler even celebrated his birthday on board the train. In latter 1941, the train was parked within a tunnel and Mussolini, who also had a similar method of transport, parked his train near to Hitler's as they met to discuss the Eastern Front. On the 16th of January 1945, Hitler would use his Führer Sonderzug for the final time, heading back to Berlin before he settled inside the Führer bunker as Berlin crumbled around him. However, there was one final act carried out by the SS against the train. On the 7th of May 1945, the SS blew up Hitler's train in his personal wagon near to Maunitz. After the war, the British and the US shared the remaining part of the train that had not been destroyed. This was then used in Germany during the occupation. In the 1950s, the cars were given back to Germany and later Chancellor Konrad Adenauer used it as his personal train and today some of the cars are stored in a museum. So within the walls of Hitler's train, America, later renamed Brandenburg, the dictator of Germany could keep a close eye on the early stages of the Second World War. Within the walls of the carriages, some incredibly important meetings would play out, as would the internal politics of the Nazi party and Hitler's inner circle. The huge train would have definitely been an impressive sight to have seen. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.